the base premium and the PUA rider. So we are going to take some time and break both of these areas down within a whole life insurance policy, mainly because they are the two most important areas if we are interested in building cash value and death benefit for that matter. So let's get into it. The base premium and the PUA rider. PUA, by the way, stands for paid up additions. And you're gonna see when I pay money into that rider, it buys me what's called paid up additional life insurance. So to give an example, what we've got here, just for simplicity, we've got several videos and content that goes really deep into the nitty gritty with illustrations and such. But for simplicity's sake, what we're gonna show here is if I pay $10,000 per year into the base premium piece and into the PUA component, how does the policy function? So 10K going into the base premium, assuming we have a traditional life insurance policy, in respect to my cash value, I will often see zero or very little of my base premium payment, whether it's 10,000, like what we have here, 1,000 per year, or 100,000 per year. Assuming we're just looking at a basic, old school, traditional whole life insurance policy. So I pay in 10K, I have nothing to show for it in the first and second year. The reason why is when I look at a whole life insurance policy and how it functions, where the company makes the bulk of their money is really they overcharge me for the death benefit in the first two years. If I'm paying in 10K, this would depend on my age. Let's just say it gets me a million dollars in total death benefit. So I'm paying in 10,000 per year. I have a death benefit as a result of the base premium dollars. Now, dividends. The company will pay me the guaranteed rate, but they begin to pay dividends on the base premium component after year two. So dividends begin to kick in year three. So for example, now when I hit year three, I make a $10,000 payment, I may see eight to $9,000 of that 10K show up in cash value. Depends on the company and product. Some it might only be 3,000. With most traditional products, you'll see it right around between eight and 9,000, depending on my health and such as well. Now, dividends are accruing at this time on the base premium only. So year four, I might see close to 10K, might not be quite that much, but I'm going to start to see more and more of my premium show up in cash value, meaning the base premium dollars do build equity. They do build, ca build cash value over time. In fact, when we see or hear of traditional whole life insurance, or if you were, were ever shown a policy that you're paying all this money in, has zero in the beginning, and eventually builds cash, it was likely a policy where we were recommended or shown put in 100% of your dollars into premium. And what also happens here is as your cash value builds, it builds your death benefit over time. It keeps going up. So base premium dollars are paid into the life insurance policy. The company overcharges me for the death benefit up front, and then eventually the product begins to build cash value, which I have access to. Now, because that death benefit has a direct relationship to my MEC limit, the base premium will have a fair impact on the MEC limit, if that's what I'm interested in when I'm setting the policy up. Now, dollars I pay into the PUA rider, paid up additional life insurance. So the base premium, if I have a product, let's say it is a paid up at age 100, what that means is the base premium will technically be due through age 100. Regardless if I actually pay into it that long, I can stop paying it, let the dividends and interest pay it, reduce paid up. There's options I can exercise, but if I do nothing, that premium will be billed through age 100 or 121, whatever the product calls for premiums to be paid into it. Where I'm going with this is that is a required premium unless I kill it, hit the kill switch with the reduced paid up or something like that. Whereas this, the paid up rider, paid up additions rider is optional. 
So if I pay 10K in, what that's going to do is immediately give me, call it 10K. Now some companies you might see 9,800 right away. We're just gonna make it very simple. We pay in 10K, you see 10K. It buys me paid up additional life insurance. Why they use the term paid up is because the base premium is due each year. It's not paid up. I pay in 10K here. I can choose to never pay anything else into the PUA component. But when I do, this would depend on my age. Let's just pretend it gets me $30,000 in additional life insurance. So that would actually be added to the 1 million or whatever my whole life amount was, or buy, buy, buy down my term if I have a term writer attached. So each year I make the 10K payment of that 10K, 10K goes in, I do begin to, to yield dividends and interest on that. Now, to be fair, this one we have going up each year, so you're gonna see the same thing happen over here actually. Meaning I make a 10K payment, I see more and more of that come back each year as it continues to push my death benefit up over time as well. Main point, when we design a policy, we often talk about splits, ways to design the policy for optimal cash value because a consumer we work with is interested in their money going into the policy because it's your money, not the agent that's writing the policy, it's yours. If you wanna know how to maximize the cash value upfront and long term, Really, the education involves around how to minimize this, maximize the PUA, ensure a MEC never occurs at any point in time, and that the policy remains flexible, where I can bounce payments up and down. I can do all of that if the policy is set up properly and if the company has flexible rules around the PUA rider. Now, this has some info and doesn't have a lot of info. Hopefully, you found it helpful. More to come in the future. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.